Hello, Susan Anderson here to start to finish the edges. This is the point where I feel like it becomes more of an art. So I'm going to spend a lot of time really refining the edges in the next day or two. Um, really making every curve as close to flowing as I can get. So right now I'm going to show you adding on and making the swirl a little bit bigger. So I'm always just nudging and curling that in just a little bit, tightening it up. Sometimes I'll take a little clay and put it um, right, just reinforce where it's beginning to flare out if I feel that there's a, a divot. So you can see that it gets to be less and less clay the closer to the edge. And many people ask how I have the patience to do this. And sometimes you have life events that make it so you can no longer do what you used to do. And that's kind of what happened to me. I think one of the things that I'm most grateful for is that we have the most had the most wonderful neighbor Dolores and it was really hard to feel sorry for yourself after being her neighbor she was the most cheerful positive person I've ever met and had had rheumatoid arthritis since she was a kid her feet were like club feet that splayed out during the period of time when I, my back was injured. Um, our son was three. She was caring for her mother who had Alzheimer's and her husband who had early stages of Parkinson's. And they were just the happiest people and it made me realize that no matter what befalls you, you can make it the most positive outcome that you can imagine. So I realized that although I was no longer going to want to be throwing on my wheel all the time, I could hand build. Uh, one of the concepts that I play with is the idea that as a production potter, it's always how many can you make in an hour? and the feeling that a really good pot is going to be made spontaneously and quickly. And now it's definitely how many hours to make one piece. And in the end, it really won't matter. Nobody will know, nobody will care. Hopefully the value of art and functional pottery is that it brings other people a little bit of happiness, something of beauty coming into the world. I think of my fingers and my hands almost like a dancer's as I'm finishing the edges. This really isn't quite to the stage. <clears throat> but if you think about it, right here, you have 
so many different possibilities of touch. The direct changing to sheer, just nudging the clay. And it's pretty, like a dancer's hands. So as I'm pinching, I'm coming in towards each other and up. So the quality of your movement, think of it as what happens before you actually touch the clay, your intention, not, not moving from your strength, but from your ability to touch the clay and move it subtly. One thing I may not have mentioned is that I still have my clay supporting the handles or the leaves, but I've changed them maybe three or four times, slightly adjusting them to allow the leaves to shrink. Then I have to decide how big I can actually make it because this one I may never fire. Two of the handles are cracking off, and I think that it may be that I, the volume of my leaves are just too big, too much shrinkage, or I didn't, I don't know, maybe I didn't get them on quite right, but I never know. One of the two of that batch did survive and get glazed. It's hard to bring myself to throw it away, but it's also not a really appealing idea to do all of the glazing and lose it anyways. And here I'm holding and giving a little bit of something for to push into little bit of support. So over the next few days, I'll just continue to build on gradually, fairing the curves so that it all flows and looks rhythmic and balanced. And then the last thing I do is carve away under the leaves to get the flow of my negative space to be just so. And that's it for today.